Mafia Music Network. Offering underground, pop, and esoteric cinema. Discover more at MovieAndMusicNetwork.com. Hi, I'm Liz. I'm here with Sasha and Brenna, and we're here to talk about Best Director nominees for the Oscars. We've all just seen them. <laughs> Brenna, go ahead. I'm going to have to start this uh, conversation by talking about what I think is the biggest snub, uh, which is Ava DuVernay for Selma. Um, I was very heartbroken when they announced the nominees, and she was not on the list. She would be my answer for who should win if she were in the running. As for those who are in the running, I have to say that Alejandro Iñárritu should win because he's fantastic. There's such flourish and skill and, and love behind the camera. He's the only one out of all the nominees I felt had style or anything truly remarkable about his work behind the camera um, with his, his, his incredible long takes and, and the fact that he had to coach his actors to act more like theater actors and stage actors to get that kind of performance out of film actors uh, is very impressive, I think. There's a lot of people who were just sort of ignored. However, you can't have this conversation and not talk about the fact that Richard Linklater absolutely should win. What he did, what he accomplished is so remarkable. There was the 7-Up series, which followed people Michael seven Apton. years. Yes. But this was something where you're taking 12 years of a life, you're putting it into one film. I think that the narrative structure is so beautiful. I think that the humanity, the groundedness that he gets from all of his actors in all of his films. He's a director who I've loved since Dazed and Confused. And the fact that he's now an Oscar front runner gives me chills. I'm so happy to see that kind of work ethic. Somebody who makes something like a Scanner Darkly getting huge Oscar praise. And I absolutely think he should win. I appreciate what he did, but I feel that that's all there is to that movie as far as direction goes, is it was filmed over 12 years. See, and I feel the same way about Birdman. I really appreciate it. I think it's beautiful. I love the shots. But at a certain point, I'm like, eh, rope. We've seen this. This has been done. Well, no, I mean, you have Russian Arc, you have Rope. Yeah, you have a lot of movies with long takes or they're made to look like they're one take. But there's so much that went into the timing of Birdman, and there's so much... Uh, audaciousness that come from the directing of Inuritu. I mean, the, the fact that he's criticizing media and, yes. and, it's, and it's nominated for Best Picture is like so exciting to me. Um, but also it's just, it's so dynamic visually in addition to the great performances. When you think about Babel, yeah. 21 Grams, yeah, yeah. Amoros Peros, but then he had a real serious slump. Beautiful is not a good movie. I mean, he really kind of, had this lull, and I think that Birdman is definitely a return to form, yeah. and it's an incredible film, don't get me wrong. I just like the grassroots fact behind Boyhood so much. Well, I mean, it's, it's what was it, a $2.4 million budget, $200,000 a year annually, and um, I, I love what they did, I love the performances in it, I just didn't feel any of them were that impressive? I, I don't feel it's impressive that he showed up two days a year for 12 years. Because it was only, it was 45 days of filming over 12 years. That's all it is. I, I, I appreciate the effort. I appreciate that everybody stuck with it. That is impressive, but I don't feel like it's Oscar impressive. It, well, I'm, I'm on your side, and I always feel like I'm the cranky one who doesn't want to get excited about boyhood. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad there's some sort of concentric circle between us. Um, but it is that idea. It's, it's like the stuntman took a really long time to make. You know, the Seven Up series. Like movies take a really long time to make, and low budget movies. There's so many low budget movies being made every single year. So I want to give Andy cred because I love low budget indie directors. But I don't want to, I don't want to say like that's what this movie is worth. I do think that the impact that the movie has in terms of the story behind it is really exciting. Um, it's just that I like Birdman that much more. It's just I felt like the effort from Inuri 2 was just that much more exciting. And so I wouldn't be upset if Linklater won, but I, 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 want, I want Birdman to win. Well, I mean, the story, the story in, in Boyhood, uh, I, 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 find, I watched it, I enjoyed it, but I found myself wondering, why did we follow this one for 12 years? We've mm. seen this story before. Yeah. And of all the things we could have followed for 12 years, we could have seen something new. We could have seen a young queer person growing up. We could have seen a person of color growing up. We could have seen a, a white girl growing up. But we've seen boys coming to age a million times. But we haven't seen narcissistic actors dealing with their <laughs> demons. That's that true. hasn't Good happened point. before. That's true. Here's my thing, though. This is what I love about this conversation. We are talking about two very original, 
very independently minded films, which right. I think is so exciting. And pretty much I think the consensus here is either Birdman or Boyhood is probably going to yeah. take I mean, it. I should. think Boyhood is going to win. And I'm then, not yeah. mad that it does. I just think that Alejandro Iñárritu deserves it Deserves more. it. Deserves yeah. it. But we're totally ignoring the other people in this category, which is kind of great because there's like <laughs> some very by the numbers sort of biopics and mm -hmm. stories of, it, it just feels like as opposed to the stuff that we assume will be nominated, the stuff that we sort of predict will be nominated, this is really nice and it's so great to see movies that were made for a tiny budget, movies that are very forward thinking, movies that stretch what audiences should watch and will want to watch. And that I think is what's so exciting about these nominations and the fact that we're making this basically a two person conversation because what seems to be it outside really feels of Wes like Anderson. Two people are nominated. You've got Wes Anderson and Inaritu and you've got all these people. I really wish Jan Gilroy was in it because I do think Nightcrawler was probably one of the best movies. Right, of the we, year. we're not but necessarily losing if either of them win. No. We're still happy because it's, it's independent. Awesome. Awesome. And spirit yes. are in both these films. As I completely long agree. As Bennett Miller doesn't. And Stop it! <laughs> I love Bennett Miller. What I love him too. <laughs> Sasha, what happened to us? Fox catcher. But that's again, he's like a he's a very independently minded director, he's too. He's a fantastic director. He I is. love Fox Catcher. I didn't. And hey. then of course the imitation game being the most obvious. Oh, it's the most ridiculous. Yeah. Hey, you want an Oscar? Make a movie like this. It's a tearjerker. It's got historical relevance. Yeah, so. I'm just happy as long as that one doesn't win. <laughs> High five, sister. I'm with you. Cheers. 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 The best director. The best director. How would Bennett Miller have us pick up a cop? <gasps>